and welcome to this week's episode of the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney. And I'm Josh, and it's great to be back. I've been off a couple weeks from the morning show, traveling and, and sort of going around the country uh, to different trade shows, to different things, but it's always good to be back, and I'm excited for this edition of the Stalls TV Morning Show where it's all about logos. For those of you that answered the poll question, we're really excited to have a percentage of you that are going to attend our grand opening next week, which we'll talk more about later. And for those of you that would like more information, we'll make sure that we follow up after this morning's show uh, with that detail to you. But now, let's talk about logos. Let's. So I think before we jump into the, the logo discussion, I guess, and talk a little bit about the promotional product market, it's only fitting to really talk about your experience last week where you've been at the ASI show in Chicago. So what have you seen yeah, so there. the, the um, advertising specialty show, uh, for those of you that haven't had a chance to look up this uh, organization, it's just ASI and it's advertising specialties. It's really the promotional product marketplace, which in a roundabout way, it's what as decorators we're all in, um, basically taking a brand and, and repurposing that onto an item for decoration. So at the show, there were a lot of exciting things. The top of my list, although I don't, I'm not sure... Um, that, that we can relive this experience here today was a, a Peyton Manning uh, keynote one morning of the show where it was he talked for at least 45 minutes about uh, key things in business, staying nimble and just being uh, adaptable and he related his on-field experience to how we need to be in business with basically how to get ahead and just reacting right. quickly and always evolving. And so, you know, with that, uh, what we saw on the show floor and through education that we conducted there uh, were just how decorators were evolving more into uh, logo consultants or promotional product consultants. And that was a, a real big theme in the industry and that this show in general is in order to grow business, you almost have to take more of a role of a, a consultant to the agency uh, that you're trying to sell to rather than just, hey, we print this product and you should buy it. You really have to understand what the product is, why they should buy it, how to fit the right product, and really just be more uh, more of a consultant throughout the sales process. So that was exciting and you know we had a full house of, of I think uh, 60 or 70 decorators at our seminar the day before the show and as, as with any experience where we give a seminar decorators are able to get hands-on experience with products and it's just always a good time to shake the hands of, of people watching the show and really just understand what they're facing in their business. Um, but with that, you know, a huge theme of the education there was decoration, particularly of logos, which is what our episode today is all about. And when you talk about how to handle a logo in your business and translate a brand's logo onto apparel or a textile-based item, you really have to understand what type of logos you're going to face in your business, especially if you're just starting up. And so I've, I've done a little bit of research on trends and logo designs in preparation for this episode that I'd like to share with viewers. Um, so let's jump into that presentations on trends and logo design. And this is all from the Logo Lounge trend, re trend Report, which can be looked up online. And all these images are courtesy of Bill Gardner, who put together the report. Uh, but we want to share this from a decorator's perspective, in addition to just a design perspective. So the, the first trend that I want to highlight for our viewing audience today is that we're starting to see more detail incorporated into logo design. If you look at the particular logos across the screen, we're talking a lot of thin lines, a lot of fine detail, a lot of fine points. And traditionally in decorating, these type of detailed logos can be pretty tough to accommodate. So we have to consider how do I take these logos and translate it to a decorating process, ultimately onto a blank apparel item. Um, any advice to share on these detail logos um, that you're seeing on some of these slides? Well, I think my first advice, we always get a lot of people at the morning show that um, do a variety of print technologies, but mostly they'll do the heat press and the vinyl cutter and the weeding steps. And that'd be my first um, piece of advice would be to stay away from the vinyl cutter and the weeding steps. These detailed designs are um, crazy. And we're starting to see a lot of these logos um, pop up everywhere, not only in corporate logos as they try to become more modern and um, more uh, functional, I guess, and, and being able to present as a hip company, but we're seeing them in music logos and a lot of different promotional products from corporate to event to um, in different items like that. So I would say if we're going to print these, um, when it comes to that high detail, I'd stay away from the CAD cut. I would look at screen print technologies, um, screen print and transfer technologies or plastisol transfers, um, any kind of digital print technology that allows you to get that high detail and that crisp line for all of these um, fine details like uh, direct-to-garment printing or sublimation printing, anything like that where you're able to be able to do this really fine detail without having a lot of steps involved that can make it difficult and 
will get you those crisp, clean, li crisp, clean lines would be uh, what I'd probably recommend. Yes, yeah, so when you look at you know printing these on paper or rendering these on a computer screen, it's uh, it's not that difficult. But when you start to translate that, right. and a customer walks in with this logo and says, "I want this on a T-shirt, I want this on a mouse pad, I want this on a tablet case, a jacket, whatever it may be." It can become pretty complicated Absolutely. for a decorator, and they need to have some tools in their arsenal and understand how to uh, accommodate these high detail logos. So that was one of the trends that we saw in right. design. So screen printing, screen printed transfers, um, and direct to fabric technologies like direct to garment printing and sublimation are sort of the high points for accommodating these detailed logos. And then, of course, you need to break it down based on how many colors and right. go from there. So the next trend that I want to share is high color. Um, this particular trend. Uh, shows up in a variety of, of different ways. Number one is this sort of coloring way where it almost looks like, you know, if you look at the hard uh, black lines or, or beige lines, depending on which logo you look at, it almost looks like a, a coloring page. And you're seeing uh, definitely defined areas of, of colors within the context of a logo, but we're seeing a lot of colors. In this particular case, you know, although it looks uh, fairly basic, you're getting five, six, seven colors in a logo on these designs. And then we take a look at you know the progression of that and really the incorporation of photos uh, within logo design. And this one's a really interesting one for me. Um, you haven't seen this a lot, but um, there you know this this website gets a lot of logos up uploaded to it by designers and artists so they can report on these trends. And we're seeing photo quality, so high color count, photo quality. How does a decorator accommodate these? Yeah, I think this is, in my opinion, going to be the most popular type of logo that we're going to run into. Um, as printers and as decorators because a lot of these graphic artists are trying to make logos come to life and look as realistic as possible. So with the high color counts, um, again, we're looking at digital print technology. So we're looking at um, direct-to-garment printing. We're looking at um, digital transfer printing. We're looking at um, sublimation printing depending on the fabric type. And all that's going to change depending on what the decorator really has available to them. Um, but really, you're going to go to something like a digital print. Um, I guess you could think about maybe doing a four, full color or a four color screen print process, but again, there's a lot of technicalities to that. So more or less, we're looking at digital printing and anything like that with direct to fabric technologies. Okay, so I've heard um, direct to garment printing a couple times and sublimation a couple times. Um, obviously, um, there's print cut as well, which you mentioned. Um, how does a decorator choose between direct to garment printing? Uh, print cut and sublimation, like how do those all fit together for a decorator? Yeah, it's interesting. With the promotional product market, there's a lot of different items. You look at cotton-based fabrics, you look at um, different umbrellas, leather, and uh, neoprene. There's a ton of different fabrics. And that's the first thing I really look at before I choose a print technology is I look at the fabric base that it's made out of. So, um, you know, my printing a cotton-based fabric, DTG and direct-to-garment printing is perfect for those full-color prints on cotton fabrics. But as I move to more promotional product items like maybe an umbrella, or a, um, a polyester bag, then I might want to look at other print technologies that can print to those fabric types. So fabric type is key. Um, and of course, sublimation can do the polyesters really well or um, any of the hard goods if you want to start to print those promotional items. Um, and then another thing I always consider is the size of graphics. And I think a lot of apparel decorators um, and promotional product printers don't think about that okay. when they get into the logo design. But um, of course, a small design may be better printed for um, a printing cut or a solvent print process versus a large design which can feel kind of thick since you're using a material that's not real breathable and it's not just an ink technology. But then we look at for full color designs, direct to garment or sublimation are a really great fit for those large art pieces of artwork because it's just ink and it's still soft and pliable on the, the promotional product. Good, good. No, it makes sense. And then the, the other key thing to I just want to point out is sublimation is only good for the light colored uh, polyester. So something else to consider is what not only what fabric, but what color um, the customer is ultimately going to require for their promotional product. So um, another trend that we're seeing is uh, shapes and gradations. And this isn't necessarily just the over outline shape of the logo, but it's being reported as uh, basically shapes comprising the logo itself. And so Bill Gardner calls this out, uh, this trend out as Trixelate, where uh, folks are using uh, triangles to ultimately comprise the logo. And whether it's a you know half tones and a play on one color, um, sort of moving up from lighter to darker, or as you see in the, the sort of yellow to blue example, where we still have gradations combined with uh, different shapes. This is certainly a trend uh, worth looking at. Um, here we have uh, ultimately a trend cited as circle break, where we're seeing a circle, but we're seeing 
uh, multiple colors within the outside of a circle, almost like you're punching out the center of a, a pizza or a pie, and you just get the outside edge that's uh, full of color, and this is being incorporated with word marks or letter marks, whatever uh, part of the design. But how do uh, people start to accommodate logos that look like this as we're looking at Chroma Coaster as well? It is really crazy how much these logos are starting to look like the full color logos we were just looking at. Um, and a lot of these designs are starting to translate to where they're almost um, starting to look the same or you're going to need that same type of digital print technology to accommodate these as well as some of the other ones. Um, just looking at some of these logos, especially the Trixelay one that you'd shown in the beginning, I'm thinking those types of logos that kind of have a high detail content, content they have high color content, um, and now we're also looking at all of the different elements that make them really open and maybe a larger graphic. So for me, printing it, I'd be looking probably at a digital print technology like a sublimation or a direct-to-garment print where um, it's really soft, very thin, very open, so it really gives the best feel on any kind of promotional item with those types of technologies. Good. Yeah, it seems like the uh, world is trending towards digital. Not only is digital the right method for full-color graphics, but it's ultimately uh, sometimes the right method for high-detailed graphics, depending right. on which digital technology you select. So it's important for decorators to take a look at uh, digital. Um, let's take a look at the next trend. Uh, dimension. So I'm going to highlight two different styles of dimension um, here. One is achieving dimension through the use of uh, contours, where uh, once again we're seeing color gradations and the use of colors and fades to bring out dimension. But ultimately we're seeing it incorporated to where it almost looks like the logo's jumping off the page. And this is just a way to sort of separate yourself uh, when somebody sees your logo on a computer screen or on a flat sheet of paper where you're starting to see the logo pop a bit. And then, of course, we have a more traditional dimension that I want to point out here um, that was cited, which is what we would call a traditional drop shadow in Stahl's right. lingo, you know, where you're seeing the, the drop shadow and the item almost look more of a, a 3D popping off the page. So I know we've talked about a lot of the decorating processes, but any special considerations for these as opposed to uh, what we've talked about so far? I don't know about special considerations, but I think a lot of promotional product decorators can really benefit from um, using different effects and different techniques with this type of technology because the point of these logos, these dimensional images, is to make them pop off the paper. So that's why they're adding these shadings and these contours. But when you move to apparel or promotional items and you're actually printing um, onto real life products, then you're able to kind of take different print technologies and gain a kind of a uh, leading edge over competitors by offering dimensional effects, maybe with a CAD cut and a heat transfer um, product on a vinyl cutter, or adding um, some type of dimensional flock or puff material like that. So that's where I think apparel decorators can really um, stand out with these types of dimensional logos, is being able to add those um, puffs, those flocks, those metallic finishes and things like that. Yeah, it's interesting because one, I guess one of the steps up front when you're consulting with a potential customer um, whether it's for a promotional product or just for decorated goods for uniforms or for their business right. period, is how much latitude do you have to kind of tweak that logo? Because we can maintain the integrity of the colors of a logo and still make it a metallic finish right. or a glitter finish. It's not like we're changing the color of the logo and the overall design. It's just how much do they want to protect the integrity of the flat logo versus how open are they to kind of expanding and having something that maybe pops or has a little more impact, mm -hmm. especially on a... Uh, textile based items. So those are some of the questions you need to ask up front when you're talking to potential customers. Um, that kind of concludes the trends, but one thing I do want to point out in general um, as, a, as a general trend is scalability is really important when you're considering logos. Uh, now we're seeing logos, you know, if you think outside of apparel, we're seeing them not only on computer screens and pieces of paper, but we're seeing them on smaller uh, phone screens for mobile, uh, when customers want to have a mobile version of their website and have their logo still stand out. And we're also seeing it even now on smartwatches, right, where uh, a viewer quickly needs to identify with the brand and the logo, and they kind of want that to maintain throughout. So I think this is something that will actually play into a decorator's hands, because I think the complexity of the logos will kind of come down so they can be repurposed across those smaller formats, which ultimately makes them easier uh, and production-friendly for a decorator. Absolutely. So uh, with that in mind, hopefully this gives you some ideas on trends and logo designs. We don't always want you to just follow the trends. You need to be aware of what's kind of out there now, but be aware of how to adapt to the trends. And with that, we're going to turn it over to this edition of Logo Lingo, where we'll talk to you about the 
world's top 100 brands. Welcome to this edition of Logo Lingo, and we're gonna go over the logos from the top 100 brands. But before we do that, I wanna to talk to you briefly about different styles of logos and what you may hear or refer to logos to kind of separate your business from the next to really position yourself as a logo consultant or logo, logo expert with different styles of logos. So first, we see we have letter marks and word marks. If we look at the IBM logo, the CNN logo, the Google, the Yahoo logo, we're looking at two different things here. Uh, Text-based graphics are extremely popular in logo design, not only for new businesses trying to establish a logo, but established businesses that want to showcase their logo and exactly who they are as a brand. So you need to be prepared to handle word marks and letter marks in your business. Vinyl cutting and print cut processes are a great way to handle these styles of designs. Next, which is probably more reserved for the high-end brands or the well-established brands, is brand marks. With brand marks, we're seeing the Target logo and the Microsoft logo here, and instantly you can recognize who these companies are. Brand marks are often just that. They're an icon that can be translated to a variety of mediums when you're printing it, but it's something that's easily recognizable, typically reserved for the most recognizable brands. Now, if we look at emblems up in the top of your screen, we see companies such as Star Starbucks and Harley-Davidson Motorcycles. Emblems are one of the easiest to produce for decals, stickers, and print cut applications. If you think of a sticker or a decal in general, emblem logos are kind of the best way because it peels off in one piece and it sticks to the item that you're looking to decorate in one piece, making it one of the easiest types of logos for a decorator to handle. And lastly, combination marks. This is usually where a startup business starts with a logo as well. We are incorporating some visual icon element with a text-based graphic. So it's the best of both worlds. It's a brand mark with a word mark or a letter mark, allowing these brands to establish themselves and be recognizable. Now this is a little bit about the style of logos, but let's take a look at how the world's top 100 brands are utilizing these logo styles across them. 37% or 37 out of 100 brands utilize either letter marks or word marks to display their logos. This will help to give you an idea of what types of logos you can expect to see come through your door and what you want to be able to handle. While it's the easiest to produce, a very small 6% either use the emblem-based logo or the icon. Basically, things aren't always going to be easier for you as a decorator. We'd love to have logos just like this for a variety of processes, but unfortunately, it doesn't always work out that way, especially across the world's top 100 brands. And you should really spend a lot of your time, if you're just entering the logo decoration and promotional products business, to learning how to accommodate combination logos, where we see 56% of the top 100 brands utilize a combination logo, perhaps because they both incorporate the icon and the text-based graphic. Now, as we look at logo design styles, we also need to look at something key for production in our industry, and that is color. We need to look at how logos translate as far as how many colors they include so you know what production process you need to be ready to send them through. 50% of the top 100 brands only have a single color logo. This makes it very easy to produce these out of technologies such as screen printing, screen printed transfers, and vinyl cut transfers, where we know cost is largely driven by number of colors. It'll be very easy for you to produce these styles of logos with these processes. Now, of course, even with single color logos, you want to be aware when a Pantone match needs to be hit. Technologies like vinyl cut, where you're relying on a specific color of vinyl or screen printing where you have a set ink color, may require some adaptation in going to a different digital production process to hit that Pantone equivalent, if you need Coca-Cola Red, Home Depot Orange, whatever it might be. Now, 20% of the top 100 brands have two color logos. So when you look at this, two color logos can really go through any of the production processes. You can take them up to a digital technology or you can build in layers in screen printing, screen printed transfers, or vinyl cut transfers. So these logos are very versatile from a production standpoint and you can feel free to accommodate them with a variety of technologies in your shop or that you outsource. And then the growing percentage is 30%. 30% are multicolor or gradient logos. And we saw this in the logo trends that we're seeing a lot more full color. 
you'll need to make sure you have a digital production process to accommodate multicolor or gradient logos. So start preparing your business now to be ready for this. That's this edition of Logo Lingo, and I'd like to throw it over to Courtney to cover our new section called Trinkets and Trash. Welcome to this segment of Trinket or Trash. What we want to look at now in Trinket or Trash is we want to look at the actual promotional items because that can vary um, on how successful not only your item is, but how successful your customer is with that promotional product, what's going to yield the highest sales results to them, and what's going to sell the best for you as a decorator when you're showing them different items, and what should you be showing to these decorators. So today in Trinket or Trash, we're going to look at trinkets. These are the items that we should be showing our customers that still have a high recall, that are still um, very popular for printing. And then we're going to look at trash. So the items that are on their way out, the things that we should be replacing, that should be um, that aren't going to yield real high results for us as decorators, and that maybe we shouldn't be worried about printing them right now. We should look at new items that are more um, higher perceived value. So with that, we're going to talk about our first item, and that's going to be the T-shirts. This is actually one of the top promotional products that are sold on the market today. Everybody owns these t-shirts and they continue to still have a high recall rate. Actually about 89% of people will recall a company that has given them a t-shirt and 57% of those people are going to actually have a favorable opinion of them. So they're actually going to like the company because they gave them these t-shirts. T-shirts, as you know, are very inexpensive to print, especially in high quantities for promotional settings, whether you're screen printing them or using another type of print technology. You can usually decorate a shirt like this for a couple of dollars, and they yield a high return for your customers to be able to sell at events and different things like that. So with a T-shirt, I'm definitely going to call this a trinket. This is something you should be printing and continue to showing to your promotional product customers for textile printing and for apparel option. The second item we're going to look at is bags. So bags come in a variety of styles and a variety of types. But regardless of what you're offering, whether the um, customer you're selling to is a high-end corporate customer and maybe you want to offer a laptop bag like this, or maybe it's a promotional event that you're selling to and you just need a simple cinch bag. Either way, 34% of people own bags and they have one of the highest impression rates when it comes to a promotional product item. So these are items that are trinkets. These are things you should be printing, you should be offering to your customers. And like I said, there's a variety of bags in the market. So pick a bag that fits the promotional product, the event, or the um, customer that you're selling to when you're offering them these items. The next item we're going to look at is actually the USB. So if you remember these little things, um, some of you may still use them. They replace the floppy disk. And now they're actually starting to become extinct as well. They're on their way out. Think about what these were used for. These were used for a lot of your customers or for your customers' customers to store data and they wanted to have their bank logo, their financial company logo, their insurance company logo on these. So when you stored your data and you looked at it daily, you knew who gave you this and you had a high um, company recall rate. But now people aren't using this for their data. They're using um, smartphones, tablets, cloud-based systems. So think about where you're storing your data. Are you using a flash drive? Are you using a floppy disk? Or are you using a web-based system like Dropbox? Technology is starting to move, so we need to look at promotional products that are moving with it. So I say trash USB and start to look at items that, again, replace it. So we can look at iPad cases or tablet cases for people that are doing um, that type of print technology and you want to be able to offer them this for a solution for them. Next, we can look at stylus. So being able to personalize, this one's actually just a basic st uh, stylus very inexpensive. This one's actually a stylus pen, so it has a two purpose. But these are things you can start printing and offering as promotional product items to your um, customers that are going to replace the USB as we start to see that become a little bit more extinct. The last product we're going to look at here in Trinket or Trash is going to be outerwear. So outerwear has a surprising recall rate and actually a very high perceived value. This is a trinket. This is something you should be printing. When it comes to these types of jackets, 89% of people are likely to purchase from a company or have a high perceived value of them because they gave them a premium item like this. Likewise, they keep them for a long time. They keep these outerwear jackets longer than most promotional items. So if you're selling to a high-end client or your customers are selling to um, kind of a specialty type of line where they need something that's high-end, this makes a perfect way to make a great impression 
and then also have them keep it for a long time so they remember the business for a, a long time of the sales cycle or the relationship and they can promote the brand a little bit more. So hopefully you have an idea of which of these are trinkets, which of these are trash, and we'll continue to update you on some of the different things we're seeing in the promotional product items throughout the morning show as we progress a little bit here. This has been Trinket or Trash. Excellent. So hopefully you've learned something about logos in this edition of the show, and not only logos, but promotional products. Uh, every one of those promotional products, unless they're kind of evolving and getting phased right. out like the USB jump drive, has a specific purpose. It's important that you have a strategy to how you present promotional products, ultimately educating uh, those customers on you know, when they may want to use a jacket versus a bag versus a t-shirt. This is all part of being more of a promotional products consultant mm -hmm. instead of just a sales agent. So uh, that's been this edition of the Stalls TV Morning Show. We're very excited that next week we have an open house here at Stalls TV. So we're planning in our morning show to give you, the viewer, a little tour of our Stalls TV studios just in case you can't attend the open house. But there's still time to sign up. So visit stalls.com backslash Stalls TV. Sign up for our open house. Thanks for watching.